How's it going YouTube? My name is MDKWLAN, otherwise known as MDK, and today we're going back into Arch Linux. But before I go into Arch Linux, as you might notice depending on how I edit this, I'm no longer in Windows 7. I have made the change to Windows 8, which I'm kind of regretting. Kind of, not, not fully, because everything pretty much works perfectly fine. But, uh, yeah... Windows 8. Uh, with the way my schooling works, I need to have some variant of Windows, and I was given a, a legitimate copy of 8 for free, so why not, I guess. It's alright. Uh, I'll do a full video on my uh, opinions about 8 and the poor decisions of 8, but it's pretty much just like what everybody else has said about 8, but, yeah. So, Arch Linux made a wonderful, wonderful change to their system, and which is kind of a pun, but not really. Um, system D has been updated, and, yeah, it's now really messy. So, System D is now moving away from the old Unix way. I believe it's the Unix way of naming attached devices. So normally, if you have a NIC, which pretty much everything does now, uh, it would assign a naming scheme. And the naming scheme that we're all used to is, is like ETH0, or ETH0, 1, 2, or 3, depending on how many NICs you have, or the wireless interface of WLAN0, and there's, there's another one, too. I think it's like a ATH0. I only ever see that occasionally. But... Yeah, System D is moving away from that. So now what System D is doing is it's really using a, in my opinion, very, very arbitrary mechanic for naming things. Now I know if anybody that loves Arch and loves System D can probably argue that ETH0 is arbitrary and doesn't explain anything, but with the new naming scheme I believe you're explaining way too much and I can get more in depth into that once I launch this so this is a fresh install of Arch Linux with without internet so I literally just got done installing it I've got gotten good with my Arch installs I guess I really didn't even need to look at anything I'm starting to remember anyway so just do our t typical login and as you notice, we don't have internet. So, normally my first re react was system control enable DHCP CD at ETH0. Which if you put this in, it'll set up a sim link, but it's setting up a sim link to nothing. Because ETH0 doesn't exist. So, what this command does is sets up a sim link with your DHCP at dot service, I believe probably wrong but I believe that's what it does so what it's trying to do on restart when you enable this is it's looking for E0 and not finding E0 so if you want to try to find your devices they change that too because if config doesn't work anymore it's not IP config like Windows what is it now IP link I don't even because IW config doesn't even work Arch, you gotta love the rolling release distros. Bleeding edge, man, bleeding edge. But if you look here, maybe I can, let me do that, uh, IP link. You will see here that the naming scheme for what used to be ETH0, pardon me, my voice cracking puberty apparently didn't hit years ago. Um, the naming scheme for ETH0 is now ENP0S3. Now, I'm sorry, but if you honestly think that's a good naming scheme for anything, really, you're just making something complicated that doesn't need to be complicated. ETH0 explains enough. It's the first NIC that's being identified, and it's applying zero to it. It's the first, it's the first network adapter. You don't need to go into more... What this is explaining here, this e EN crap... <laughs> 
this whole new naming scheme apparently for uh, Ethernet devices, so wired wired devices, is now going on EN, and then everything else is kind of. I'm not 100% sure what it is. I think the P represents the position that it is in the uh, PCI array. So it's like P0 would be your first slot of your PCI slot, and S is representing of something else, another slot. I, I don't need to know that information, and honestly, the only people that would need to know that information would probably be a systems administrator. But even then, I could think of about three or four other different ways of identifying your NICs without having them to be named in an arbitrary manner. So as you can tell, I really don't care for this update at all. You can go back to the other way. And to be honest, the only people that this is going to affect, affect, effect, one of them, um, are people that uh, fresh install. So coming from a fresh install, because if you have Arch already, you don't have to worry about this. Because it's, it's going to maintain the old usage to a certain point, I believe. But the way it is now, if you install Arch, it's convoluted. So, to fix this, system, control, enable, DHCP CD at, then, no, not at, DHCP CD dot service. This is what you have to do now. So now it's enabling DHCP CD, which is DHCP, for all your devices that are connected. So it sets up a symlink. So again, so no, we, do, we, we don't have internet, which is fine, which is what I wanted to do. It, it's aggravating. I love Arch. I love the idea of a rolling release distro. I love the bleeding edge. But sometimes when you have bleeding edge, you don't get you don't get good things. So we have it now. So for those that missed, it's system control enable DHCP CD dot service. I I guess it's not really that big of a deal because it's not really changing too much. All, all you're doing is going from DHCP CD at and then whatever device to DHCP CD dot service. It's not that big of a deal, but again, the naming scheme and I, I don't like the way the direction the arch is going, and I, I don't know. The whole system D thing is it, it's new, and I don't understand it. And to try to find any information on Arch Linux is like. You may as well scream from a mountaintop because if you go into the IRC channel, all you're going to get told is to read the fucking manual, which, if anybody hangs out on the Arch Linux channel, you guys are utterly, utterly useless because of that. Telling someone to read the manual is not helping them. Because what do you think is the first thing I do when I try to troubleshoot a problem? Just to go ask someone? Of course I'm going to read the manual. And if I was going to read the Arch Wiki, it would be nice if it was updated. Half the stuff on there still is applied to the old, old version of Arch, and not even talking about System D stuff. So, for you to tell me to go to read the manual when the manual is not even up to date is pointless, and you're not helping anybody by doing that. So, it's aggravation to the highest point. And I, I just don't know. You get the same thing from Gentoo. And if people want to learn stuff, the biggest help, in my opinion, is to show them how to do it or is to help them. Now, I can understand how that gets annoying. Helping 40 million people at once gets annoying. If you've ever been in the Freedom channel of Ubuntu, which is default designed for anybody that gets XChat to go to it's it's a mess but to tell someone to go read something that is not up to date is not helpful in the slightest and again the same applies to gen 2 so at the same time some of these people are saying 
we want more people to join the, the Linux community to make the Linux bigger and more readily used for the, the average desktop user. But when the average desktop user comes across a problem, which they're going to happen because people have problems on Windows all the time, you, what are you going to do? Just tell them to go read a manual? I... This just angers me. And it's the community that angers me. So, I don't know. Maybe I'm in the wrong. I don't know. But, yeah, there's my rant on the Arch community and the overall egomaniacal trip that a lot of people have because they run Arch or because they run Gentoo. Yeah. But, if you guys have any questions, please ask them. That's why I made this YouTube channel, was to help people understand different aspects of Linux. Different distros of Linux, not just Ubuntu, not just Fedora, not just atypical Linux, to delve into more advanced Linuxes, of Linuxes, really Linuxes? Oh, sure, I'll wing it. To go into more advanced Linux systems, so Arch, Gentoo. Granted, I'm probably never going to do a video on Gentoo. But, still, ask. And I will more than likely answer you. Thanks for watching. Please comment and give me ideas. Thanks for watching, guys. See us.